my left index fingertip with some uh, eraser type uh, Copy for the left um, on the index uh, eraser type. I have 610 disconnected, and in my hand I have Whiskey 1009 610 ready to connect. I have no FOD in my band, and no Big 10. Copy that, J610 to the adapter in the P610, and confirm that the P610 is forward and over center. Forward and over center. Work. for your right glove. No change on the right glove. Copy, no change on the right glove. Thanks, David. And so for you, David, next if you can head out to um, help Anne, and she may need your help to reinstall the MMOD shield on the node one meter location. No way. Have a big good timing, so just getting the last connector here to read. Okay. Have a big good timing, so just getting the last connector here to read. Okay. Have a big good timing. McLean is mating the last of the new adapter cables uh, for this portion of the spacewalk, which will provide backup power to the Canada Arm 2. Right, uh, 610 has made it over center. I think that's two good jumpers installed. Copy that in. Uh, P610 is, uh, made it forward over center. Yeah. And, and uh, one uh, quick question. Can you confirm that um, for all the jumpers uh, that you connected, that um, with the adapter, that both um, levers were forward and over center? Yes, I actually just went back through and looked at all eight uh, connectors, and they are all over center. And for Perfect the SA, I released two TA clamp, three TA clamps. Right? If you need to, you can use those TA clamps, and then you can install the And guys, we have about a minute and a half to a night pass. All right. Oh, I'm sorry, but a little bit better behaved. Yeah. You can move to the right if you want to come in. Well, yeah, what, what, what do you think? Which, sorry? What do you think would be more helpful? Um, I think if we both reposition it. Okay. Which might be a 
You hear? Stable? Yeah, I'm just trying to get my MOI down. You can see the space station has now entered an orbital nighttime flying over Afghanistan. And the Af Looks good. That's good. We can slide this over. So this is connected on an AET. It's been a long time. Yeah, yeah. Yep, see that? So, and you should read to the long T-handle tool with your mini workstation and detector or dab it. And uh, just a quick reminder that um, the Zeus fasteners have to be connected in the proper order. You have to do the center Zeus fastener first. Yep. Right, so there's a ret from the uh, big workstation to the long key handle now. Do you want to the to the handle or to the or to the adjustable? The tether point. The cap on tether point. The adjustable, yeah. The cap on tether. We're going to slide this back. You may need to release that adjustable off of that handrail. Oh. Hey, my head. I, think it's, I think it's catching on the uh, on the uh, little tubes at the center of the of the axis. There you go. Yeah, we're going to need to pull it toward yeah. us in order to get the flanges under again. Going down. Towards you. Yeah, a couple of cables here. Yeah, there we go. Got it. How do all these code cables run? Yeah, and now we just got to make sure everything's out from the bottom of it. Everything on top? Sorry? 
All the cables on yeah, top? everything goes on top. Yeah, the spanner goes on top, too. Ann and David, if you can uh, ensure that the three tabs on the inboard um, side of the panel are in, and uh, that should help you uh, get the panel in properly. That should help you uh, get the panel in. Okay, they're in. Copy, Ann. Panel's got to go. Is it too tight? I, it, it pulled right over it last time. It, it's a little tight, but it pulled, still it works. Just like it is. There we go. Yep, there you go. Yep. This juice is not bad here. Need to go further in? Uh, I don't know why this seems like it might need to. Find your rubber daddy. Put it in the way. Yeah, it's sitting on top. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to do the center of the fastener first. After reinstallation of the orbital debris shield that the astronauts are working on right now, they will continue their tasks separately after cleaning up this work site. Uh, Anne McLean, as EV-1, will continue working with the Canada Arm backup power cables by completing the routing of the cable that David St. Jacques stowed in the S-0 truss. St. Jacques will move over to the Columbus module where he will begin installing some Trunnion slip-off preventers uh, to prepare for the arrival of an external payload platform next year. Uh, it actually needs to go further in that way. Toward you? No, toward the node, the center. Uh, okay. Did you going to get something hard? Yeah. It could have just, that, the connector could have floated up. But these are the floating kind. I don't know. You to go further in, radially in now. Radially in, yeah. yeah. I compare it to the neighbor. Lift because the Zeus fastener is cut. Yeah. Oh, it's also got it. Maybe I could slide it. Wait, one of those sliding connectors. While the astronauts complete this orbital debris shield uh, reinstallation, we've got a question from Ray from using the hashtag AskNASA. Ray wants to know how much training it takes to become an astronaut. After initial selection, astronauts go through about a two-year training period uh, through multiple systems and um, processes, anything from uh, Russian language training to training for spacewalks in the neutral buoyancy lab, as we discussed earlier. This corner looks like it's in the right place. Once they are assigned to a mission, the astronauts continue their training, and they are always keeping their skills sharp. 
Our next question comes from Dan. We've gotten several questions about um, the glove check, and he wants to know what is the purpose and how often does it happen. Mission Control or the astronauts can ask for or provide a status on their gloves at any time, but it's timelined for almost every, uh, to immediately occur almost every procedure. Uh, sometimes the gloves can be damaged, so the astronauts take good precautions to uh, make sure that there is no damage done to the gloves during the spacewalk. Some tasks like relocating the articulating portable foot restraint or lifting the orbital debris shield may cause more glove wear and tear than others. You guys are doing a great job. We're just letting you work through the issue. Good job, guys. You are uh, phenomenal. Uh, 
We got starboard, is that okay. it? Starboard's in. Oh, is yep. it? No, that's not. Yes, sir. Copy, starboard is in. No, it's not in. Oh, wait. I thought it was, it came back out. Astronauts confirming they have tightened two of the Zeus fasteners. Uh, you have the center and the starboard Zeus in. Only center so far. Copy, only center so far. I'd like to get you up. It took actually quite a lot of force to go that 90 degrees. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Wait, that's actually kind of not coming out. Is it to me? What do you think? Good. The line's only at 45 degrees, but it, it's holding. We're now four and a half hours into the spacewalk, and the astronauts are finishing up one of their tasks. And, and just FYI, we um, lost your WVF, so we can't help out much here. Okay, I think I must have pushed it. I can push it. Yeah, I got you through the light again. We're actually just trying to figure out if the starboard one is actually in or if we just kind of have it actually in. Ah, oh, there we go. Yep. yep. Okay, we are locked on the starboard side. Too. Starboard lock. Have to push real hard. Okay, and yeah. in data, just FYI, we only need two Zeus fasteners installed, so um, we're going to move on from here. And, and in data, great work, excellent work. So for you, Ann, you're going to um, yeah. throw that short uh, T-handle tool in the crew lock bag, and then you'll uh, grab the long T-handle and install it in the crew lock bag as well. Okay. So like right next to you. I can you're still ready to this, so I'm gonna yeah, sorry, I'm gonna send it over. Ready? Actually, you know what? Why don't you hand me that AET and I'm gonna hook the short able to it also? Yeah, both together? Yep. Is there something in the crew? Ann, like just one quick question, Ann. Um Can you verify that the starboard is these fastener turned a full ninety degrees? It did, yeah. Copy. Right, Connected to the still. I'm gonna let my ret go. And yes, to be, there's a couple rets free from where the cables came out. Mission Control has shared that uh, only two Zeus fasteners need to be um, tightened to confirm the attachment of this micrometeoroid orbital debris shield. The astronauts are now cleaning up the work site before moving on to their next tasks. McLean will continue working with the Canada Arm backup power cables, and David St. Jacques will work with the Bartolomeo Trunnions. You can reinstall that adjustable. That's a good reminder, thanks. I will get that uh, as I leave, and I'll call it when I do it. Copy, and thanks. Both the angle tools are on one adjustable attached to an integral rest in the crew bag. Copy that. Uh, so uh, one of the things we need to do is in bag inventory. So whenever you guys are ready, we can do that bag inventory. I can get 
can get that, David, if you want to start heading towards your next work site. Do it. Because i got to go uh, back by the airlock. Yep. Leave it here. Sure. Okay, David, um, before you depart, uh, can you give us a glove and half check? I got dry hat. And the glove. Left glove, no change. Copy, left glove. Left glove, no change. Copy, no change on the glove and dry hat, and we have about 20 seconds to a handover. And doubt it, you're heading back to the airlock. Not the airlock. Hear that sound? Please? Say good? You just hear that sound? The spring sound? Yes. Good. We're in another satellite handover and about four hours and 30 minutes into today's uh, spacewalk. So far, the astronauts have moved one of the adapter plates that was used to uh, store a lithium ion battery. They've also installed some Ethernet cables and just installed some cables for uh, backup power to the Canada Arm 2. Yeah, we just we had a weird sound that both of us heard. Um, come on. And, and that may be uh, due to the, the fact that we went through a handover, so it could have been from that. Okay. And Anne, could you uh, describe the sound a little better? It sounded like a spring, a boing. Okay, copy. And the factor still cut on there? Yep. Looking at everything. This is it. Your factor has got to come off and back on. Or maybe we can put it all around. Shortly. All right, Jeanette, are you ready for the crew lock bag inventory? Ready. Okay, on the outside, I have an adjustable equipment tether and a long wire tie. I'll open it up and right here. All right, on one of the integrals, I have a ratchet wrench with a 2 inch and 16th. I have an AET with a cap. I have a RET to the pocket caddy with a 9 inch hex. I have a RET to another cap. And then I have one of the integrals that goes to an AET. On one end of the ATE, AET is a short candle tool, and the other is a long candle tool. And then we also have the uh, that pin puller. Okay, and could you tell me how the uh, loop pin puller is connected? The pin puller is on an integral. Copy on it, Negro. And so that's not the airlock. I'm going to retrieve the medium or are you back? That's a good plan, David.
McLean worked, McLean worked with the teams on the ground to ensure that all of the tools were in the crew lock bag and St. Jacques has translated back to the airlock where he is sto uh, stowing one bag and retrieving another before his next task on the Columbus, Columbus module of the International Space Station. And it might have, is that the one two that were in series to the PGT that could be picked up? Yeah, it might be some on mine. Let me give you the three of mine when the were station. Copy, David. Was that a red change at the first work site? And Jeanette, I think that's it. I have three normal reps and one red tip pin on the main workstation on top of the red on my DRT. And the one Copy that, Tommy. And the ones for my camera. Okay, and that's a good tag inventory. And David, thanks for the uh, information on your mini workstation. Jeanette, that AET from that connector is back on 133. Copy and thank you, Ann. And Ann, before you head out, could you give us a uh, glove and hap check? Um, glove, no change on the left. Change on the right and a dry hat. Copy, good, um, no change in gloves and good hat. Okay, you're heading back to the airlock uh, and you're going to stow that uh, node one meter crew lock bag on handrail 0550 near the width extender. Copy. Jeanette, did you want me to stow that in the airlock? And uh, this is the point where we talked. We could, I could drop off my PVT and pick up the GoPro in order to do a GoPro survey of the. Uh, Copy that, Ann. Stand by, I'm checking. While McLean translates back to the airlock, we've got a couple of more Ask NASA questions. We have several classrooms in Canada watching today as Canadian Space Agency astronaut David St. Jacques, which you see um, right in the middle of your screen here, is doing his first spacewalk. And we're about 10 minutes down on the timeline. Our PET is 440. Uh, so if you um, have time to do that, it's your call. Our next question comes from Jordan Harcourt, uh, whose class wants to know how the astronauts keep tools from floating away. You may have heard them use the term RET or retractable equipment tether. Those tools are tethered both to themselves or to their mini workstation, which can be sort of like a little toolbox, as well as at some points they will tether the tools to different parts of the space station to keep them from floating away. Medium or you bag, you're heading out to the Columbus work site. I think I have the uh, bag on my DRT, rested. I'll be on my way. Copy all, David. Okay, the crew lock bag is back in the airlock. Copy crew lock bag in the airlock.
United Statistics happy with me trading out my PGT, I will pick up the video camera. Copy and checking. Copy and checking. And and we're okay if you want to drop the um, PGT and pick up the girl pro. Copy, David. And um, as you're heading out to the Columbus work site, you're going to go Nader on the starboard lab struts, and you're going to drop your green hook on no to you, and I'll, I'll give you the hand roll as I see you translating out there. Copy on no to St. Jacques is now translating to the European Columbus module, where he will install some Trunnion slip-off prevention. Copy on phase one, David. PGT and my RET for my swing arm are both back in the airlock. I have a GoPro on an integral RET to my swing arm. Copy all in. Back out the s site. These Trunnion slip-off preventers that uh, St. Jacques will be working with today just arrived on the Progress 72 resupply craft that launched just last Thursday, April 4th. These are attachment points for the Bartolomeo platform. It's scheduled to arrive to the space station next year, and it's an external payload um, station that will be attached to the Columbus module. And you can drop your green hook there. 0345 for the green hook. That the thermal cover is closed. Copy. I begin my translation out to S0. Copy uh, that thermal cover closing. Can you do a quick safer check? Good reminder. Safer handles are down. And copy, safer handles down. So you're going to head out to the um, S0 Trust Bay 1, and I have a warning reminder for you as you head out there. Uh, remember to observe a two-foot keep-out zone from the ungrounded connector P338J338-alpha, which is located in Bay 1, port nadir of handrail 3463, and also do not use the heat pipes for translation aids inside Bay 1 and Bay 0. Copy both. General Thomas, 0345, dropping my green hook. Copy, green hook on 0345, no two.
while St. Jacques makes his way to install those trunnion slip-off preventers uh, to the Columbus module. McLean is making her way to the S0 truss in Bay 1, where she will finish routing and mating the cables earlier stowed by St. Jacques. These are the same uh, Canada Arm 2 backup supply, uh, backup power cables. Okay, Ann, I see you on S0. And Donna, for you, you're heading out to the starboard, uh, you're heading out starboard to the, Corona, um, the Columbus end cone. And on the forward side of the end cone, you're looking for handrail 0901. 0901. And you stow the uh, medium or U bag there. And as you're going out there, I have one caution to read to you. Um, the caution is to avoid inadvertent contact with the EHDC that you'll see on the node 2 forward um, end cone. Um, however, the boom is acceptable for BRT loads. And Jeanette, I have ingressed the truss at S0. I see that. So you can go ahead and translate to the truss jumper cable. You should see that sort of nader in the truss, and you're looking for hand roll 3451. I see the uh, jumper cable. And if you like, Ann, you can stow the cap keeper on your swing arm. Uh, you can use a rep from the, um, to the cap keeper um, ring to the, your mini workstation rep. Copy. McLean is now in the Bay 1 section of the S0 truss, which is sort of like the backbone of the International Space Station. While in Bay 1, McLean will route one cable into the next section of the truss, Bay 0, and then she'll later leave this uh, section of the truss, go into Bay 0, and complete the, um, make the cable into its final configuration. And David, for you, um, once you get to that handrail 0901, um, you can stow the medium or a U bag on there, and you can also use it for a BRT location, or you can use the boom on the no to EWC um, boom. Copy, and I am at 0901, the process of dropping the bag. And we have, we have a, a suggested body position, if you like. Copy. And Jeanette, now that I'm seeing this connector from the back side, the uh, initial uh, impressions were true to the connector is touching structure. Copy, the connector is touching stru structure.
Copy, so you've read it to the D-ring of the large small adjustable um, from the ORU bag and released the adjustable from the bag. Is that correct? Yes, not done that yet. Okay, copy. And so then you've tethered to the scuff plate MLI with the large hook of the adjustable. And then uh, you can grab the short T-handle tool from the ORU bag to release those two quarter turn fasteners from the scuff plate. David is removing the um, multi-layer insulation and scuff plate cover so it doesn't get in the way of the robotics whenever they attach Bartolomeo after its arrival to the space station next year. As we mentioned previously, it will be attached to the Columbus module, which is um, aptly named. Uh, Bartolomeo is actually named for Columbus's younger brother, so it's very fitting that it will be attached to the European module Columbus. And we have uh, one quick question for you. We don't have video of you right now, but can you tell us if the uh, back shell of the ungrounded connector is touching the back shell of any of the other connectors? Uh, let me turn it back. Hold on. And I just did a GoPro survey of the whole thing um, from a couple different angles, so hopefully that will be useful. Yes, that will be very useful, Ann. And it is not... And it is not, so there's a, kind of behind the bale, there is a part that sticks, that's like squarish and wider than all the rest. That portion is touching the panel that the other connectors are connected to, but the back shell itself of that connector is not touching anything else. Closest approach looks about half an inch from, I think that's the, the other side of the P3038 connector. Okay, copy all in. Those are great words. Thanks. Even if I have uh, removed the scuff plate MLI, I have let it to the uh, secondary the tube. Up. Copy. And David, please be sure to close the um, ORU bag to protect the other piece up. I will close the bag. Thanks, David. Good at time that the uh, red blue cable, I believe I'm releasing art and seven, if you remind me. So you're correct. You're going to release wire tie start five, one twist. Five, start one and you are correct. As wire okay. tie five, you're five, you're going to connect it to handrail three four five two. Copy. And, and just verify that your safety tether is not trapped by the cable or the wire tie. Can I say again? Verify that your safety tether is not trapped by the cable or the wire tie. McLean is stowing the red cable uh, being discussed on a nearby handrail for later installation. That won't be during today's spacewalk, but she will continue routing the blue cable into the nearby Bay Zero truss. Can you find that your safety tether is not trapped by the cable or the wire tie? And for you, David, um, once you install the secondary T-stop, uh, verify that the tether, tether point is pointed zenith, and as you need to, you can lock out your your rut to prevent inadvertent uh, removal of the T-stop. It's done. That is locked. Tether point is zenith. Copy, and I have PGT settings when you're ready.
these Trinian slip-off preventers that David Saint-Jacques is installing are plugs going onto the end of the Trunnions. Um, these will help provide more stability for future payloads attached to the Bartolomeo platform. St. Jacques will be installing two of these uh, preventers. Yeah, good call, battery 39.4. Say again, David. Gonna get a good call, battery 39.4, ready for settings. Copy that. Your PGT settings are Alpha 1, clockwise 2, and you're going to turn the uh, bolt about 15 turns. Alpha 1, clockwise 2. 15 turns. Connect wire type 5 is connected to 3452. I believe the next I'm releasing and just configuring it low profile. Is wire tie six, that's correct, Ann. As you can see, the space station is now in an orbital sunrise, flying over the South Pacific Ocean, and we have just reached five hours into this spacewalk. Nice, Ann. I see that you've uh, configured wire tie 6 and a low profile. And next you can release wire tie start, and that should separate the red and blue bundles. Guys, we have about 30 seconds to a short handover. You can see team members in mission control um, near the top of your screen. That's Jeanette Epps, NASA astronaut, who is walking the crew step-by-step step through the task today. And right beside her in the blue shirt is astronaut Doug Wheelock. He's also serving as the Capcom for mission control. Near the bottom of the screen is flight director Rick Henfling leading the teams in the room today. David, could you repeat that last call? We were just coming back up with you. Yes, uh, so 13, 13 turns, green light, 2.5 on the torque. The eyelet is uh, Zenith. Copy that, David. And David, that was a uh, good torque turns and light. Um, we're going to reconfigure the uh, PGT again to Bravo 4 clockwise two, and this time you're going to turn the boat one to two turns. Bravo four, clockwise two, one to two turns. And actually, David, um, we're looking for 16 to 17 total turns, so that would mean you're going to turn the boat about three to four turns. I have 13 so far. Copy, so three to four turns is what you're looking for. Jeanette, a uh, quick question for you. I uh, believe the procedure I'm supposed to use wire tie 7 to track down this red cable to 3452. Are you okay if I use wire tie 8 red? Just got a little more slack in it. Checking. 
Yes, Ann, you can use that. There's no issues with that. Okay, thanks. I guess uh, 19, green light, 19-2 on the third, after only two turns, so total 15. Copy, total of 15 turns. If you can ask the red cable to track down to 3452. Copy, 3452, Ann. And for you, David, that's um, a good uh, config. And if you can verify, there's no gap between the T-stop and the trunnion. I can confirm no gap. Copy. Then you can release your rep from the, the uh, secondary uh, T-stop. Copy. And for you, and you can route the blue bundle through the Nader Triangle opening of the Bay zero zero, and you're looking for a handrail 3472 on the other side. And you can use an adjustable to attempt to throw the blue bundle on that handrail. Copy and understand. And a uh, real quick question on wire number six. Um, to release it and put it to low profile, uh, I prefer this I can release it without completely releasing it. It has two cables inside of it, uh, which kind of holds the blue and the red a little closer together. I just want to make sure that that should be the last one, wire size six, that actually connects the two bundles. Checking. Okay, and we uh, concur with that. Okay, great. And for you, David, after you've released your rep from the TSOP, you can uh, close and retrieve that um, ORU bag and stow it on your BRT. And Taking a few photos of the stuff. Copy that. I was just about to ask. You can see from Ann McLean's helmet camera, she is uh, stowing that red cable on a handrail in the Bay uh, 01 truss. Meanwhile, David St. Jacques has installed the secondary trunnion slip-off preventer. That's actually the first he has installed. Um, now he will move on to releasing uh, the scuff plate multi-layer insulation on the um, near the primary. Um, trunnion slip-off prevention, and then install that primary. And David, one quick thing. Uh, thanks for taking the photos. Since we don't have WVS, um, those photos will come in handy. I have a question for you for this area. Go ahead, Ann. Cable. There's a cable that kind of runs through. It's not. It's tacked down a couple places, but kind of runs diagonally through the open space in the say, which makes it kind of tricky to uh, navigate around in. And there's a wire tie on it that uh, is not connected to anything. I'm wondering if you mind if I tack that down to 3450. It would just kind of keep it out of the way. I don't see any obvious marking on the cable, other than it has wire ties that are marked. Copy and checking. 